So over the summer, different people are choosing a topic of their choice, something that they feel that uh, uh, God has put on their heart to bring as an encouragement. So um, I'm going to pray for Nick and then hand over to him. Uh, are they ready with everything that they need there? Brilliant. I should have said a big thank you as well to um, Sam. He's in the process of training people for tech. So we've got Claudius, uh, Nathaniel and Elijah are all having a go. And if any of you want to have a go at some point, um, you know, there's training available, which is wonderful. So let's pray for Nick. Father God, thank you so much for Nick. Thank you for his love for you, his heart for you, his heart for your word uh, and his desire to share what you've put on his heart with us. And Lord, I pray today that your Holy Spirit would anoint him, that he would have uh, your authority, your boldness, that he'd have clarity in his mind, and that the word that comes today would take deep root in us and will bear fruit, and that it would help each one of us, whatever we're facing in life, however we're feeling, whatever our thoughts are, but it would be as though you're speaking right to our very hearts. You know uh, what we need in our hearts and minds, and I pray that we'd hear from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. So, there's my title for today. After the, um, shall we say, we see lots of stuff happening on our television screens, our internet feeds, our whatever you call it. Lots of upheaval in the world. So, how do we face the future? What I'd like you to do is you're all sat around, well, you're sat in groups or round tables or whatever. Just pause for a few, a few moments and discuss um, in your table. How does watching the news or reading the news on your phone or whatever device of choice, how does that make you feel? Just two or three minutes. What are you know, some key sort of emotions, thoughts, etc. Thank <laughs> you. 
Agenda here, as Femme said. Sorry, can you turn the um, mic up? Right. Um, so, a mixture of emotions, but it makes you think. People, you know, people, a lot of some people said despondent, fearful, all those sorts of things. So, what does that mean for the future? You know, if you're constantly bombarded by this stuff, what's what's the future holding? And people are so interested in the future, aren't they? And what's the future hold? You know, people, where do people search for things for the, about the future? Horoscopes. Horoscopes, yes. Look to the past. Look to the past. Sorry, Look to the past, yeah. So lessons, lessons from history. Patterns, yeah. So people are searching for what's happening in the future. People look, you know, to horoscopes, things of, you know, that we would think questionable, shall we say, from um, the occult or whatever. But then, where should we look? Bible. The Bible. <laughs> That's it. So, think about this. I make, uh, this is from Isaiah. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purposes will stand, and I will do all that I please, as God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. So God makes his purposes and his plans known. You go on to the next one. The Bible is actually very reliable in what it's said down the years. These are just a handful of the prophecies about different aspects of Jesus' life that were told about by a prof, prof, or prophesied way before they happened. There are hundreds. So the Bible has been an accurate foreteller of the future for many centuries. And if you go on to the next one. And similarly, things told about the nation of Israel through the story of the Bible. 
about their going into their land, the destruction of the different temples, um, their exile, their regathering, all those sorts of things. So, thinking about that, how does that then bring us to what, what would you say this is? <laughs> so there's some optimists in the room and there's some pessimists. You both made exactly factual statements, but it's Sorry. Okay, so you've seen that. Some of you say it's it's half full. Some of you say it's half empty. So the the ones who are seeing it as half full will be the optimists. And if you're seeing it as half empty, that's a more pessimistic view, isn't it? Anyway, next one, please. But it's our attitude towards the future that helps us develop our own. Well, as the as the saying goes, our attitude develop helps our altitude. <clears throat> now, thinking about the future, lots of Christians get hung up about, oh, when is Jesus coming back? What's the exact date? All those sorts of things. But what we have to deal with is the Bible talks about secret things and revealed things. The verse on the screen there, the secret things belong to the Lord. The reveal, but the things revealed belong to us and our children's children. Now, if you go on to the next one, here's a weighing up between secret and revealed things. When Jesus ascended to heaven, the angel stood and talked to the disciples and said, the same way Jesus went, he will return one day. That's a revealed thing. We know that. But then Jesus said in Mark 13, that referring to the day he returns, the day, but about that day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels or the son, but only the father. So it's a secret thing. It's not a revealed thing. So all those times if you've come across things on YouTube, people saying, oh, it'll happen on this date, that date. It's secret. It's not for us to know. But we'll come on to that in a moment. So on to the next one. Sorry, could you put it on here as well? So I can... So, in that sense, oh, disappeared. Okay. All right, I'll go with it. So, it's like a man going away, leaves his house, and puts his servants in charge. So, Jesus has gone back to heaven. We're here to be in charge, in that sense. So, a servant, a master expects his servants to be doing what he's asked them to do. Thinking through these things. So how do we, but at the same time, keeping watch, doing what he's asked us, not trying to figure out the secret things. Next one. But to help us in our attitude towards the future, here's three things I'd like to just share with you briefly. Our attitude, waiting for Christ. And we've sung about the next one already. Christ already reigns. And how we can continue into victory. So, let's go. So, <clears throat> I know uh, there was a lady in the church I grew up in who, when she passed away, she literally was you know, her face was radiant and she was looking to the you know 
to Jesus to come and take her. It was literally, she was radiant, as the story goes. And so, but she was waiting for Christ to return. She was waiting, sorry, for, you know, to be with Christ. Um, and it was just, so that's what the Bible encourages us. We're to be waiting to be with him. Because you can see from the uh, things on the screen, Paul talks in Thessalonians about the Thessalonians turned to God from idols and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming loss. So waiting for him. So let's be more expectant about the future. Yes, there's all sorts of stuff happening in the world, but waiting for him is one of the keys. And then the Hebrews verse talks about um, he'll bet he will, uh, where is it? Christ will appear not a second time, not to bear sin, but bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So, you've turned to Christ, you've been walking with him, waiting for him. And think about it. When you're sitting there reading your internet feed, reading about all the dark stuff that's happening, what happens? Your whole, you know, your whole sort of persona or, you know, it gets dark and, you know, you feel, as people talked about, depressed or, you know, whatever the phrase you like to use. But I sought the Lord. He answered me, delivered me from my fears. Many people have, you know, fears about tomorrow or the next, um, the future. Those who look to him, look up. You're radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. And one John talks about, but when he appears, we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in them purify themselves. So waiting for him, you, know, you don't want to mess up, do you? You want to press on, you want to keep doing what he's asking. You want to... But there's grace if we do. So, you know, that hope pressing on. You got it? Yeah, next one. Now, we've talked about this already, but so I'll make this brief. Christ already reigns. Oftentimes we see the news and think, what's God doing? You know, where is he in all this? A legitimate question, but over the overarching theme is, you know, God raised Christ from the dead, and as this verse talks about, he seated him in the heavenly realms. He's on the throne. He hasn't stopped because of whatever situation. Christ hasn't stopped reigning, and he's far above all rule and authority and every power and dominion. So, much higher than we think, oh, can God manage? He's, Christ is seated far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. So, and it, that's not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And he's placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. So, it's for our benefit. And he shares his authority with us. So we've been made alive with Christ. God raised us up with Christ and he seated us with him in the heavenly realms. So that's his grace to us, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. So Christ shares his authority. Did you know that? Can you use that? Tony talked about taking authority. Take that into the week. Take authority in some of these situations. Christ has shared his authority with you.
So when Charles was crowned, um, he was given a scepter, wasn't he? The scepter was a symbol of authority. God has given, given Jesus that scepter of authority to rule in the midst of his enemies. So his rule and reign in the midst of the situation. But also we can stand in that, that rule and reign by faith. <clears throat> because Jesus said to us, or said to his disciples, um, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Go to the office, share with people. Go to the school and share with people. Go to the university or to the care home or to the, you know, wherever it is God takes you. Share with people. Go in his strength and his, his authority. And Christ has disarmed those principalities and powers and triumphed over him in the cross. And he leads us in that procession with him to share his fragrance everywhere that we go. So, just as a sort of takeaways from that. The Bible, you can rely on the Bible's information. It has proved true over many centuries because it's God's word. All, our focus is to be on doing what God has revealed to us. And the big, big one, keep waiting for him. Keep looking to him. Keep expecting his coming. But Whilst doing so, keep pursuing his ways. And remember, Christ is already reigning. He has been, and he's not going to stop. So even when you see all sorts of upheavals in the world, he is still on the throne. Not, he hasn't given up for the weekend. He hasn't had a sudden problem. He is reigning, and he will continue to do so forever. And then by faith, walk in the authority he shares with you. So take that on board. You want authority, stand in his authority by faith. And bring that life and hope through the Lord Jesus to our community, wherever that takes you in the course of a week. So. We'll, put, we'll end there, but just want to pray. And if there are um, situations you you need to stand in authority with, over, or things you're struggling with, be very happy to pray with you. And Ros and Anna are just going to play another song. And if you want to come and stand out here and we'll pray, by all means, or if you want to somebody next to you pray with you and tell it to you but know that Christ is reigning over the situations that you're facing let's stand together and as we declare his rule and reign in a situation let's expect it to change so Lord thank you that you are on the throne thank you that you are in control no matter what we see, Lord, you are in charge. And we just want to submit to your authority and thank you that you share your authority with us to enable us to stand. And we pray, Lord, your presence would permeate each situation this week. Lord, you would make, yeah, make a way where people aren't seeing a way at the moment. You would bring life where people are struggling, Lord. You would bring freedom where people are feeling constrained or bound by things. Lord, you would bring your breakthrough this week. I pray. Lord, commit our ways to you, ask for your presence and your help and your enabling. Thank you for what you've done for us. Amen.
We ask Lord, that your word would bring life to us this week. We know our wonderful son. In Jesus' name. Amen. so much as we've sung those words lord our faith might be small but lord your word says even faith small as a mustard seed can move mountains and i just pray that as we join our faith together for the battles that we face individually for the battles our family face for the battles that people in the world face right now lord we believe that you are our firm foundation that you do reign that you're on the throne that you are the one who has all powerful and is all powerful. We wait for you, Lord. We look to you. Lift our eyes. I pray for all of us right now that we would lift our gaze to you. And this week, help us every day when we might start to feel bogged down with life as it is, the different struggles, that you just speak to us by your spirit and say, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. And as we lift our gaze, we will have testimonies next week of just how our attitude has taken us to a new place in you. 
Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We just like the opportunity, Nick and I, to pray with you. If you need <coughs> prayer, come to the front as we now have coffee together, uh, as we have tea together, do chat around the tables, do welcome those who are new, do connect with people, do share an encouragement from your week. But if you feel there's something I'd like prayer for, do come and we'll pray for you. We'd love to do that. God bless you. Have a great week. And uh, yeah, same time, same place next Sunday. Thank you. Yeah.